Okay, the second video tonight is going to feature uh, some solutions to uh, the Bessel function. So again, this is the Bessel function of the first kind. Uh, they also call this the Bessel function of order Z. Uh, remember, Z is really the, the value for P. It just, we're restricting it here to uh, an integer. So P is an integer. And so P takes on that role of Z. Uh, Z represents P. Uh, in the last video, we derived this from the Bessel equation, and now we want to kind of talk about what this guy looks like. Uh, you can use a CAS program to graph this so that you can see what it looks like for, uh, for a good number of x's, enough that it's really going to start to converge to itself. Uh, what we want to do is look at a couple of its values. So let's look at j of 0. Uh, that's the first one. So that means in the summation, k equals 0 to infinity, I'm just going to replace all the z's by 0. So it's negative 1 to the k. It's going to be x to the 2k divided by 2 to the 2k, and then times k factorial times another k factorial. So that's just k factorial squared. And then let's take a look at the terms this generates. This generates 1 as its first term. Uh, the second term, because the orders are skipped, is uh, an x squared. And that's going to be divided by uh, 2 squared uh, times 2 factorial, which is just, uh, oh no, it's 1 factorial because this is the second term. And that's squared. And then the third term is going to be plus, uh, this will be x to the fourth. And then in the denominator, we're going to have uh, 2 to the fourth. And then this will be k factorial, and k right now is 3, so it's 3 factorial squared. And then the next term is negative, and it'll be x to the 6th divided by 2 to the 6th. And then that'll be times, uh, this is the fourth term, so it's 4 factorial squared. And then it goes on and on. Uh, if you look at this, uh, the graph of it actually looks very much like a cosine function. So it's almost a cosine function. It fails to be a cosine in two ways. Uh, the zeros of it and the cosine function don't quite match up. The zeros of this function actually stretch out a little bit. So they begin regular, and then the further you go into the series, the, uh, the, the more the alternation uh, starts to stretch out. The second thing is that its amplitude decreases over time so that you don't get a constant amplitude like cosine would have. One of the reasons why is when there's an integer solution to the Bessel function, it represents a damped harmonic oscillator. And of course, that's just what a damped harmonic oscillator would look like. It would feature uh, a cosine function, but it would be one with a decreasing amplitude that would, that would slowly stretch out its period because one of the things the damping does is it both slows the period over time as well as reducing the amplitude. So that's one of the applications that the Bessel function can take on is because the Bessel equation represents the parameters of a, a damped harmonic oscillator, the Bessel function actually represents the solution. Let's also look at J1. So J1 would be uh, summation k equals 0 to infinity, uh, negative 1 to the k, and now it's going to be uh, x to the 2k plus 1, so it's going to produce all odd orders. It's still going to alternate, though, and then the denominator is going to be uh, 2 to the 2k plus 1, so that'll always be odd uh, k factorial, and then this will be z, uh, z being 1, this will be k plus 1 factorial. So this will always be factorials of two consecutive numbers, k and the next one up, and these will have the same odd powers. So what it's going to produce, uh, there's no zeroth power, so there's no constant term. The first term is uh, x over 2 minus x cubed, and that's going to be over 2 cubed times 2 times 1 factorial, uh, plus this will be uh, x to the fifth over 2 to the fifth, uh, and then this will be 3 factorial and 2 factorial, and then minus x to the 7th, and that will be over 2 to the 7th, and then this is 4 factorial, 3 factorial. 
and as you might expect, this looks an awful lot like a sine function. Uh, the difference is the same as before. It's a little bit more stretched out as you go further in, and its amplitude decreases over time. So, so yeah, both J0 and J1 are representative of integer solutions, and 0 and 1 are both common parameters in the Bessel equation when you're representing a harmonic oscillator. That's one of the applications of this, all right? So let me erase this. The, the next thing I want to talk about is the next general solution, and this is going to introduce that idea of uh, the gamma function, which we talked a little bit about day before yesterday, okay? Okay, a more general solution of this guy is when P is equal to any V greater than or equal to zero. It's no longer going to be limited to an integer. So when that's the case, we're going to choose a different A naught. We're going to choose A naught to be equal to uh, 1 over 2 to the V, where again, V is just P, except now it's a more general positive number, not just an integer. And then this is where we introduce the gamma function of V plus 1. And the reason for this is, Again, when V is equal to P, that doesn't change our original recursive relationship. Let's write it down again. So we had A to the 2K, and you'll find this in the last video. That was negative 1 to the K times A naught, and then the whole thing was over 4 uh, to the K uh, times K factorial. And then the rest of it was this uh, V plus K, times v plus k minus 1, and then that went all the way down to v plus 1 being the very last term. Because it wasn't a true factorial, it didn't terminate at 1, it terminated at v plus 1. And then we have even worse news now, v doesn't even necessarily have to be an integer. So this could be like 0.5, so it's 0.5 plus 1, or 0.5 plus 0, and then somehow we're going to do a factorial of that, of multiplying it by itself times 1 less. And I know the function n factorial just can't handle this. So that's why we've chosen this for our a naught. Let's look at what this does. So what I want to do is make the replacement. So now we've got negative 1 to the k. And then instead of a naught, I'm going to put all that stuff in the denominator. So it'll be, again, 2 to the 2k plus v. 2 to the 2k plus v. It'll still be k factorial. And then all this junk, let's write it down off to the side. All of this, v plus k times v plus k minus 1, that's going to go all the way down to v plus 1 as the last term. And then I've multiplied it by gamma of v plus 1. And one of the properties of gamma is that gamma of v plus 1 times v plus 1. So any number times the gamma function of that number is always just that number plus 1. So this part of it right here turns into gamma of v plus 2. But we know the term right before this is going to be v plus 2. So it'll be v plus 2 times gamma of v plus 2. And that'll just turn into gamma of v plus 3. But the next term up is that, so this repetition will continue until eventually we get to gamma of v plus k. That'll be the last term we get. And then v plus k times the gamma of v plus k is just the gamma of the one right above that. And so that's what we can place right here. All this junk is going to turn into the gamma of v plus k plus 1. And now I've represented this uh, two-kth term of A in a much, much easier way. The A naught is gone, and now we've got everything else. So now we can write what the Y is. Y is the summation from K equals 0 to infinity of negative 1 to the K. Uh, this will only still produce uh, even terms. So... Uh, well, not even terms, it's going to produce uh, 2k plus v terms. So it's going to be 2k plus v as our power on x. And then the denominator is going to be having uh, 2 to the 2k plus v times k factorial times gamma of v plus k plus 1. 
And this guy also has a name. This is called the Bessel function of the first kind uh, with an order of V, where now V is more general, that V is just greater than or equal to zero. It's not fixed to be an integer. And that's why we need the gamma function. We can't use a factorial here because V plus K plus one may not be an integer. And if it's not an integer, then I can't do the factorial function of it. But what gamma of V plus K plus one is, is like a factorial function. If, uh, if these were integers, then gamma would just be the factorial. In the next video, we're gonna explore exactly what gamma is, what its definition is, and then how it can sort of give us factorial-like solutions for numbers that are not integers, all right? But this gives us the Bessel function of the first kind, but it's a more general solution where V can be an integer, but it doesn't have to be.